Hey YouTube, so I want to talk to you about some books that I read recently. There are three of them here, and the first one is Most Talkative by Andy Cohen. And if you are a Bravo-aholic like I am, you probably watch Watch What Happens Live, and it is hosted by Andy Cohen. He works in um, like development at Bravo, and he is hilarious on the show. I really love it. I remember back when he started hosting the reunion shows for like Project Runway. I was like, who the fuck is this guy? And why is he hosting the shows? He's awful. Um, I really did not like him, and I didn't understand like who the hell this guy was that came out of nowhere and was hosting the things. Um, but actually, I know how he came to host those things since I read this book. I have been wanting to read this one for a while. It is called Most Talkative, Stories from the Front Live of pop culture and very 40 year old virgin-esque kind of cover right here. So anyways, um, I read this book just because I'm obsessed with Real Housewives and I know that he was talking about housewives in the book so just like 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 a little freak I just wanted to know like everything that he had to put in there and he talked about like reunions and seating at the reunions and how like even that's like a struggle behind the scenes with the women and I just think that they're all just ridiculous and catty and so entertaining love watching it. Although this season, you know, I'm really kind of getting over Caroline. She just seems incredibly angry, not let into that. Aviva just seems like an awful person on New York, so I really want her just to be off the show. I never really thought I would be one to root for Ramona, but in the recent episode, mm -mm -mm. get Aviva off the show. She sucks. Um, in Miami, I just started watching Miami. Um, it was awful the first time around. This time, I think I can get into it. Uh, did not like DC, didn't even really watch it. Atlanta, love me some Nini, love Kim, although Nini, she's getting a little full of herself, so I'm not really liking her so much anymore, but gotta love Kim, and uh, what other seasons are there? OC, I mean, they're just ridiculous, so trashy, gotta love it, yeah. Okay, so, most talkative, um, he has some stories about, you know, like, his life, and his beginnings in journalism and blah 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 all those are kind of whatever i think this one was one of my favorite stories it's called perfect pitch and uh, he talks about jeff lewis uh, from flipping out who i absolutely love as well and it's just it was just a fun book to read definitely nothing to like go run out and spend your money on maybe wait till it's on paperback and not hardcover or if you can find it on sale i got it on sale at target so that's why i bought it um but it was really entertaining to read and if you watch watch what happens live you know how he talks and he's like post on my Facebook, like he's always like, has this way of speaking and he writes the same way that he kind of speaks so I could really hear his voice in it. So I enjoyed reading it just because I enjoy his personality on the show. Um, it was really fun to learn different things about the housewives, but I mean, all in all, obviously it's not a work of art, but it was an entertaining, fun read, and I would recommend it if you're somebody who loves Bravo, watches Watch What Happens Live, watches, you know, Flipping Out and Housewives, and you love the show, and you just kind of wanted to hear a little bit of the behind-the-scenes stuff. But there was some stuff in it that was, like, really annoying. Like, when he was talking about pranks that he, that he did, I just was like, nah, that's annoying. Like, at certain points, he kind of, like, annoyed me as a person, but it was like, I'm in it for the Bravo stuff. That's what I really enjoyed, so that's why I kept on reading. The other book that I read is called The Devil in the White City, and I love a good thriller. I love murder, serial killers, and mixed with some historical stuff to teach you things. And this book is the story, what is his name again? H. H. Holmes, right? Yeah, so it's about the serial killer H. H. Holmes in Chicago, and it's kind of like his story at the same time mixed in with the World's Fair that was going on in Chicago. So it kind of has some history and they was doing like the alternating chapters. And so I was kind of bored during the chapters about Chicago and the World Fair, but they were still interesting. But then they kind of coalesce at the end and you kind of see how um, the scenario involving the World's Fair happening with all these people coming in kind of uh, facilitated a situation where this guy could kind of get away with a ton of murders with all these people coming in and out. And back in the day, obviously it was so much easier. Like it was crazy the kind of things that he can get away with that he wouldn't be able to get away with now. It was just like buying all these things and never paying his and then changing his name and having all these different identities and like I mean it must be so much harder to be a serial killer now than it was in the back of the day although I mean it's easier to be a serial killer I feel like than to be someone who murders someone from passion and get away from something because I mean I study criminology and I'm interested in these kind of things I'm not trying to kill anybody but I mean I feel like if you wanted to be a serial killer the key is just to like kill people that have no connection with you like all over the country or something you don't don't even make like a pattern. Like you know how serial killers always have patterns? Don't have a pattern because then you get caught and you get all these things tied to you. Be random. That's the key. Random. Be efficient. Maybe throw away their bodies like they do on um, Breaking Bad. You know, put them in the little vats and melt them away. Um, and now my book review has been turned into advice on how to kill people. So I'm going to stop that because I feel like someone might use my own advice on me. So anyways, Devil in the White City, it was really entertaining to read. Um, that makes it sound like I enjoyed it. I did enjoy it. I'm not sadistic. 
Maybe I am. I do enjoy a good serial killer movie. Uh, my boyfriend and I recently watched a documentary on H.H. Holmes and it was really interesting and I was able to fill him in with so many other things that weren't added in because the documentary kind of glossed over a lot of stuff that the book really looked at. Like this person went into a ton and a ton and a ton of research. So it's like factually accurate. So that's why it's entertaining to read at the same time. It's very much like a historical thriller. I enjoyed it. Um, it won awards and stuff. So don't just take my word for it. It is good. Oh, and the full title is the Devil in the White City, Murder, Magic, and Madness at the Fair that Changed America by Eric Larson. So if you're somebody who enjoys books about history, killers, world fairs, Chicago, this could be something that you find interesting. And um, a book that I don't have in front of me actually that I recently finished is called The Suspicions of Dr. Witcher. And it is kind of about this whodunit murder that occurred on this countryside farm um, yeah, I'll just start talking about the book and do a little, you know, review as if it was here. I just don't have it physically in front of me. It's in Philadelphia. And this book kind of has like the same kind of thing going on where it was, um, bits about history and about like a person and some sort of historical stuff mixed in with the story. So this one in this case was about, uh, Mr. Witcher. I might have said Dr. Witcher a second ago, but it's Mr. Witcher. Suspicions of Mr. Witcher. And he is like one of the first detectives in England. And so this child gets murdered in his family home and his like throat is slit and he's been like stabbed or something and they're basically trying to figure out who did it so they end up bringing in this guy and um it's kind of this unsolved thing i can't really talk about it too much without kind of giving things away but it was really fun in the beginning trying to figure out who i thought did it i kind of you know i didn't enjoy it as much so it's not something that i say go out and go out and get but if your friend has it and you enjoy these kind of um historical thriller, mystery, detective stuff, books, then maybe you would enjoy that. It has a lot of history wrapped up in it. So the parts that were about just like the origins of detectives and like this guy's one particular life was kind of boring, but the actual crime itself, you know, it's kind of titillating and interesting. And um, so I enjoyed reading it for that aspect, but it was something along the lines that was kind of similar to this. Other books that are kind of like that, that I read, but that I enjoyed more. Um, one is The Alienist, that one I did enjoy. Um, and there was another book by that person that I was gonna read. So end of tangent there. But Devil in the White City I did like and I would recommend this to people who find serial killer books interesting because H.H. Holmes had a very interesting story. And then the most recent book that I've read lately is Gone Girl and this one was kind of all over Tumblr. Um, a lot of people were like oh my god read this book and um, my friends read it and so I decided that I would read it. I think it had just come out in the past couple of months and it's by Gillian Flynn. She has a couple other books. Um, yeah I don't have the book cover for it. But, okay, I liked it in the beginning, then I was absolutely obsessed and amazed by it, like, midway, and then I predicted everything and kind of was not really into it by the end. I honestly don't even want to describe the book to you because I think that it'll just ruin it. Any description of the book, like, I feel even bad saying that, like, oh, these things happen and then I predicted it and then I didn't really like it because I don't like to hear that when I'm hearing about books too because I feel like it influences me. And when I read a book, I spend like every single second trying to figure out the thing that happens next. And I do that in movies too. And my, it annoys my mom when she watches them with me because she's like, you just don't relax and enjoy the movie. Like you're always trying to figure it out. But that's what I enjoy. I love trying to solve things and puzzles and being like, nope, that's gonna happen, that's gonna happen. So it kind of makes watching movies hard because I end up predicting a lot of the stuff that happens in movies because a lot of times it's really predictable, but that's why I love watching thrillers and all sorts of movies like that. I'm gonna be talking about some movies that I really liked lately and there's one in there that was really, really, really fun to watch. Ryan and I watched it, um, I think it was on Netflix and it was so fun. So stay tuned for a video about that later because um, I don't even remember what the title of it is, but I will discuss it in that video. And I don't want to even say anything else about Gone Girl. I know that so many people love this book. Um, I would say that I really, I enjoyed reading it. Um, there was one, I would say that I enjoyed reading it. There was one night where I think I stayed up for like six hours reading this book. So that's a good sign. It engrossed me that much, but then it kind of tapered off in the end. So basically, check this book out. Maybe wait until it's paperback or borrow a friend's copy and see for yourself it's pretty twisted, definitely very, very twisted. Um, if you're somebody who catches on to things and you really, really analyze things, um, you will predict it. But if not, and you just kind of like enjoy reading the book, maybe you won't predict it, I don't know. But it was just something that I kind of got frustrated with because it was like, oh, that's exactly what I thought. Like I just want like the author to be like way smarter than me and just to blow my socks out of the water and you know, have like a sixth sense moment. But 
didn't happen with this one. I did enjoy it though, and I would recommend people to read it. It's just not, you know, my favorite book I've ever read. So that's the end. To wrap it up, Most Talkative was really fun to read if you are somebody who's into Bravo TV shows and you love Andy Cohen and watch the Watch What Happens Live program, but if not, I would probably steer clear of that because you won't really enjoy it. The Devil in the White City I found was really interesting. It was definitely better than The Suspicions of Mr. Witcher, but if you're someone who is really into the historical thriller genre and factual stuff and there's tons of research involved in both of them, then you could check them both out. But of the two, I would recommend Devil in the White City more. Um, I didn't love it, but I did really enjoy it. And then Gone Girl, I'd say check it out if you're into some fucked up thriller. And that is pretty much all I want to say about it is just, you know, twisted. That's the end. So thank you guys so much for watching and let me know if you've read any of these books and what you think. So um, maybe try, see, spoilers, because what if someone's looking at the comments and then they get a spoiler? I don't know how I want to navigate this. Um, okay, read the comments at your own risk. Feel free to post spoilers down there. Just a heads up, guys, so be cautious. Okay, thank you guys so much for watching and have a great day, bye.